Hi, good evening. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, if you are new and just viewing for the first time, feel free to, to subscribe and like. Um, follow me really anywhere you can find Mike Harris Design uh, and see me at MikeHarrisDesign.net. So for the video tonight, I'm going to be taking you through my creation of an illustration for kind of a pinup thing. Uh, I called it the um, Candy Skull Girl, just <laughs> out of lack of any kind of originality. You can see here I've already laid in the illustration and I'm starting with the eyes. Now I, I did a technique here that I haven't done before, um, but I found really successful. I didn't see it a tutorial or anything like that, but just hoped it would work and it ended up doing pretty well. And that was creating all the objects for the eye and you can see typically where the upper lid, the upper lash would hit. I would normally uh, just create shapes and cut that off. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and keep these pupils whole, the pupil of the iris, all those things, and then create the shape for the white of the eye. And that's actually also going to go ahead and form a mask. And that mask will go ahead and contain all the, the colored parts of the, of the eye, the iris, the pupil, like we said. And it was a really clean thing. It's completely non-destructive, which is also fantastic. And it makes filling that with color, you know, using gradient if you need to, really easy. And then I went ahead and just finished the remainder of the eyelash. I uh, went ahead and did the bottom lash first, continued doing the top lash. And as I went through the illustration, I was very cognizant of those shapes that I was trying to build. And so you can see that those shapes were easy to pull off in Illustrator and came together really, really well. And then we went ahead and moved on to the skull makeup and make an easy ellipse. Then do the little pointy ends because, I mean, it's more work if you don't. You can really control how everything hits together and make sure to round those corners like we're doing here. If you have any trouble following this, I don't blame you. It's sped up to about a thousand times. Uh, I was working particularly slow on this project, just kind of taking little breaks everywhere. So there's a lot of skip frames here as we watch this through. And then underneath the eye, there's kind of this little crease that's uh, our smile line. And uh, we're just throwing that in there, and that's going to be kind of a hint of the character's cheeks rising as a smile. Now you can see we're doing the same thing with the other eye. And obviously we didn't just dupe the eye to both sides because it wasn't... Uh, it's not a symmetrical portrait. Uh, as most of my other tutorials have been, this is an asymmetrical portrait. And so we had to do things a little bit differently. And a lot of that went into the, how the drawing was created. You can see we've got some guidelines up there, and those guidelines are supposed to tell us roughly, you know, where our, where our eyes kind of hit at the same level. But what I find is, is that the, the eye that's, most focal to the viewer, which in this case is, is her left eye, the one that's on your right, is going to be a bit larger, or at least that's the best way to sell the illusion that the character is slightly turned away from you, and that the right eye, her right eye, to on your left, is going to be eclipsing, you know, beyond the horizon of her cheek, the side of her head. So just trying to get those lines right. And you can see we've got that eye, and it's a tad smaller. Um, not like a huge amount, but um, you can see, especially on the bottom lash there, it doesn't quite go past that guideline like the bottom lash on the left eye does. And then like we did before, an easy ellipse to start that out. And then kind of working our way. Uh, we're going to incorporate those skull makeup marks into the outline here. And the reason for that is, is it obviously makes things a lot easier, but we're working with a, a fairly strong um, black here, and you're probably going to choose a dark color for your outline anyways. So by combining this together, we can create a cool um, place where things can come together. Now, you obviously wouldn't want to do that if you would lose a lot of definition, but these large black areas have so much like information, visual information to carry through the rest of the illustration, it's okay. Um, and it goes all the way to the jawline, the neck, and the nose. Another one of those smile lines we said. And 
and then on to the nose. So the nose is going to be a simplified nose and that we're not going to have nostrils or anything like showing up. We're going to just do the basic outline because it would be covered in a, in a dark black makeup. And if you've seen any of those makeup tutorials or, or seen any of these pictures on Pinterest or anything like that, you'll see that most of those girls are almost, almost obliterated any kind of detail you could normally see in their nose, which is the look we were going for. And then we're going to throw some ellipses there as decoration. And it looks like we're moving on to probably another one of the focal features. I would, I would estimate probably the lips. Oh no, I guess we're doing the outline. <laughs> Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I worked on this, so I'm recording the vocals over the visuals that I recorded a while ago. Now, um, again, what you're trying to do here is to eliminate a lot of excess points. So by picking simple lines, you know, three or four points at most, and you could probably get away with less, like one or two, um, you're going to eliminate some of those weird kind of like they're almost flat areas when you do a nice round edge like that. Those round areas tell you, you know, oh, there's too many bumps here, essentially. All right. It looks like we're just kind of configuring those. Okay, and then we're on to the ear. So, again, the ear is going to be made up of that kind of stroke look. But I believe in this case, the ear is actually going to be flesh colored because the makeup only extends to the edge of the jawline and the hairline and then beyond that it is actually going to be skin and we'll see that as we progress further into the, the tutorial and then we're gonna I don't know if we end up using all of these parts but the idea here is by delineating each of these areas you can more quickly create shaded areas or you know, create little areas of, of darkness or, or different color patches to help differentiate the different parts of the ear. And then that will translate, hopefully, into more readable illustration. I'm having a little trouble with the Shape Builder tool, it looks like, but finally get it. So we're looking at some earrings here. And these are really simple, just flat discs. I mean, you could get really intricate and add a lot of, like, uh, specular highlights and and crazy details to make those really feel gold or shiny but in this case we're looking for just simple hoops with uh, uh, enough 3d to say like okay this is a um it's an object that's attached to her now we're going to do the hairline and then under where the hairline goes underneath the uh, cactus flower there's not going to go ahead and be any any um kind of we're not going to spend any time making curves especially for that Oh, excuse me, we're actually doing the skin. So we're going to be doing the skin here. And uh, so you marquee out the entire the entire uh, skin area and just let that line lay underneath your outline. And then as we get, pull, we get done with that skin, we're going to move on to the hair. And like I said, underneath the cactus flower, the hair doesn't need any definition. And with the hair, what we're focusing on is creating strong, rounded shapes that will read well. And not focusing too much on what the illustration told us. We're going to go ahead and accentuate some shapes, reduce some as we keep going. And that will help us with readability as we continue with the illustration. Um, and they also feel not more natural, but more illustrative in general. And you see I'm removing the kind of the cowlick here as well. Because it uh, just really, it we know that it would happen along a part. And it's kind of just a... A detail I threw in to make the character more friendly and approachable. Um, I wasn't really trying for a super like uh, bombshelly pinup. It was more like a, an approachable, friendly one. So I wanted to have the character have some endearing qualities uh, beyond the smile and kind of the light, bright eyes. Also, do that with the cowlick and the hair, um, and kind of the unguarded, not really like super like sexy pose. Okay, picking back up after a break, we went on to another major feature, which is the lips. And again, keeping simple shapes, we're trying for that feeling of symmetry without being symmetrical in this case. So what would those lips look like in ratio to each other and train for a really clean line? And we go ahead and do that, and then we have the little part above the lip there. 
and that shadow is going to actually bleed into the black makeup that makes up uh, the skull mouth. So that shape won't be too distracting on the final, hopefully. I mean, this is sped up about 3,000 times, so I must have been watching a TV show or something on Netflix that was kind of cranking along with this. And I mean, that's fine. Um, the overall illustration, I think I was able to finish under a couple of nights. Um, this part's always easy for me, uh, doing the lines. You can just kind of put on uh, anything, any Pandora or YouTube video or whatever, and, and zoom, zone out. And you can see I keep hiding the underneath illustration just to, to check my readability. And now we're on to the kind of decorations and stuff because we finished all the major lines. And so this is almost like a a rose, like uh, almost like a mandala type shape, a mandala, excuse me. And uh, it's going to go ahead and have probably a few stroke lines in there too, um, so we can add some different color options. And we're doing the shading, and on the uh, so that our light source is coming from the left hand side, and then casting. So shadows are casting right, you know, so the chin, the neck, um, parts of the face and the nose will tend to cast a shadow right. But what we're doing is making sure uh, not to cast that shadow all the way right because we want that feeling of there's a, there's a shadow rounding around the other side of the neck as well because, you know, three-dimensional objects is a cylinder. So there's going to be light being able to pass around the other side too. And uh, looks like we're doing kind of the web look on her forehead here. Really just trying to get a nice ellipse here so I can use it as a guideline for the, the little vertical tendrils as well as the upcoming horizontal ones. And again, just nice, smooth, gentle curves here. One, two, you know, two anchor points at most. And then you can see we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of fidget with those just to make sure that we're on them. Thicken them up. And um, this is, you know, obviously a way to just get nice uniform lines around the edges because uh, you don't want them to end in a square that'll look weird. Round it's going to be a little more natural. And I expand them. Okay, and then we're moving on to the next day. And it looks like we're going to go ahead and draw the cactus flower. Uh, looks like we skipped the part where we filled in those lines. You can see those spider webs out there. And for the cactus file, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the rotation tool and then repeat the rotate as many times as it takes to get those. And I'm happy with the results the first time, so I, I, I join them and then cut up the shape in the middle. So we're going to have a nice outline, just like our figure does. We'll pop that right on the head, and it looks like it's almost perfect size. <laughs> so kind of, you know, we're moving out of the background because we finished that full for a character. So I was a bit inspired by Ollie Moss. If you see any of his work on um, Firewatch, you'll know what, I'm, what I was going for here. These really geometric shaped uh, vistas that just have levels and layers of similar like c colors. And in, in Firewatch is almost all reds and stuff um, for the park. And it, it looks really impactful. It looks really cool. It's very illustrative. It's very designery. So I'm doing that. And then in that, I believe he actually traced um, images of trees. Um, and you can you can actually go ahead and use Photoshop to create trees, but since we're doing cactuses and cactuses are fairly simple, we went ahead and just drew those, and we're gonna steal the cactuses that look good and use them in other parts of the illustration. And we've got a kind of a leany church here. Um, I was a bit inspired by uh, there's a level in Overwatch. I don't know if you've seen it that has this church in the middle and it's town square and so that was part of my inspiration board as I was working on this and then we're going to have an off center cross here as well so we're just building the the upper peak of of the mission or church and then laying out the cross here uh, really simple shapes but we're going to use we're going to use um, perspective as we get a little bit further to and you see we're doing it with the crossbar there on the cross. That that perspective is going to help us kind of sell that it's askew. It's at an angle. And we're not looking straight onto it. And then we're going to cut out little windows on each of the sides there. And I'm using that first window as a guide and how to, to lay out the second one. 
perspective wise we're just kind of using really really fast really quick perspective we're not we're not laying out horizon lines and stuff like that so i'm sure some industrial designer somewhere or some concept artist is going to yell at me but i can't you know it's it doesn't necessarily serve it being being more exact then we're using the shape builder tool to cut out those extra shapes we don't need we've got an outline because we know we're going to need one for a figure to separate her from the background all right, went to our cooler website. We pulled a palette, and you can see we're applying that palette to the first of the background. I think this is a good move generally just because it allows us to read uh, the foreground, uh, for character a bit better as we continue. And you can see we're just kind of applying things as we go. We've got, a, we've got the, the setting sun, and we're going to repeat some colors in there. That's, you know, I think that's allowed. I think the the style itself originally is you know you're just using the the colors that all you know happen in a line they're all analogous um, and then we're going to do a simple gradient for the dusky sky as the sun sets below the final hill and that final hill doesn't have a lot you know of detail to it as it's really just there to give us a horizon so hide the background we're happy with that we're going to go ahead and use the same palette or a similar palette to color the character and um, so we're going to start coloring things in and then if you don't know you know you can use that shift x command to change an outline to a solid fill and that makes selecting things a little bit easier and as you can see as we start to color things in and changing sizes and figuring out oh you know this is better this is better i think you know we went with well you, know, you kind of put things together get the shapes in the right order and then as you see how things come together, you can make those decisions on the fly and say, well, you know, this isn't the right color scheme. So the, the, the finished illustration doesn't look anything like this as far as color scheme goes. Um, but that's okay because it, it's that process um, here. And, it, and I always say this, uh, so, but this is the part where I really don't love the work that I'm doing, I always have to force myself through this colored part because I feel like it's so far from being right that I'll never get there. And it irks me and it makes me want to stop. So this is the part I really push myself to finish in one seat, you know, just, just do it in one shot so that I've got at least the flats done. And, um, and then I can start tweaking those flats and getting to the the, the gradients and applying the shadows and textures and then I'll feel much better about it but I have to get past the flats first and you can see a lot of my shapes are going to be hidden because they're built out of order um, which is something you can avoid if you're really thinking about it but you know it it's, takes a while to really get there and and I always end up with some shapes out of order just how it's going to go so we're going to attempt to range things how they should be and you know we might have to use a shape builder tool to cut things back out again and stuff like that but I think all in all it's it's going pretty well and again we're not worrying too much about that upper left side of the temple of the face because we know we're gonna go ahead and, and go in there we're gonna use the the cactus flower to hide those just kind of rough shapes so it's not too much work there and it and it's important that you find colors that you can repeat throughout the illustration uh, this is something where you know in your mind you think everything needs a separate color it needs its own unique color uh, for readability uh, like what is this material made of and if you were doing um, a 3d render or you know doing an illustration that was a technical illustration yeah you would definitely want to hold to that but with this kind of illustration the simpler the colors, the better, especially if you're going to do this for apparel design. Uh, not as only help the read of your illustration, but if you were going to go ahead and take this into like the creation of a shirt or something that you need to that you need to um, have ripped onto a silk screen, you're going to need those separate colors because each of those colors would cost you money. And, you know, you can go ahead and get six different screens printed or four or whatever, but, you know, you're spending $450 on your setup costs. Uh, now, I use Redbubble, and they're going to be using a, um, 
print on garment system. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. But, you know, it still, again, helps readability if things can be the same color. Uh, and it makes your design more cohesive in general. And so are you picking a red that's going to be contributory to the oranges that are already in the scene? So it's going to feel like, oh, that red could belong with those oranges, you know, those coral colors. And I think we did okay. So we've added a little bit of a glow to the edge of those tattoos, and that's so that they appear like they're leaking to the skin. I think it's a little hot at this point. It's a little heavy. And I don't know if it stays the whole way through. I think it might go away. because It just seems way, way, way too maxed out. Um, and I, I think uh, Mike Henry uses a, a process like that in his Photoshop illustrations where he bleeds the, the ink tattoo, the, the outline on it, bleeds it into the skin of the character. And so that tends to look really good because it makes it look like, oh, it's, it's actually within the skin, but it doesn't really carry through as well as on this, you know, on this type of design. So looks like we've got everything kind of figured out here. Took a minute to look at it and we've got our cactus flower in there. We're going to go ahead and do some, some quickie uh, gradients. We've got most of our colors in there. There's going to be a little cast shadow from the, from the flower. We're trying to make sure it's not like too, too crazy. Um, and for like a really distinct object like that too, uh, you know, where it's floating above, you know, using a, a drop shadow, um, really works well. If you're just going to copy the, the thing above it, you know, here we go. We're starting to throw that texture on. We already have a shape that we can use as a mask. So we're applying that as a mask and then fooling with the layers so that we get the levels we want. See here, we're going to do a, another cast shadow for the bottom of the lip onto the teeth and I think we got that our overlay we're, we're really going for a desaturated look using another texture here and again just tweaking those levels until we get that kind of desaturated um, paper look that we're really searching for so there's a lot uh, going on as far as those those things are concerned you see a lot of texture in there which is which is fine you know it you're making a kind of a, a real choice about that All right, I'm probably pulling back and taking a look at it. It looks like it actually at this point I might actually bend, which which t takes me to the next part. You know, wh where do you go from here? How do you really bring this thing to life more? And and that's really where you have to, I think, at some point say, okay, I've done what I can in Illustrator. It's time to take it into Photoshop. So create a PNG on high, bring it into Photoshop. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and apply some, some effects here. We're going to tighten up that square. We're going to go ahead and pull some images from online. It looks like we've got a paper texture here. It's going to give us some nice fold lines, like we're working with something that is going to be a poster. And we're going to move that, that crease line so it's not in the face. And we're going to go ahead and reduce it with a mask so that we're really just removing those lines. And we're, we're going, okay. Or you're changing our levels, doing a JPEG export, and you can see here we have a full saturation JPEG export. I believe that it has some texture in there, but not a lot. Mostly just gradients and stuff, and and not the the end Photoshop texture that you see later. And then from our fully saturated version, we've got our Photoshop version here. So again, we can see that we've uh, applied a a texture in a way where it's going to multiply onto the layers and appear like they're printed onto this this parchment paper and that maybe it was folded up in somebody's pocket. Now the fold lines are a little off center obviously and they would be in center but for the illustration they had to be and this way you really get that feeling it's on something real and it you know it's full parchment. I think uh, what I posted on my Redbubble site was the full saturated version but looking at you know both together, I think that both have their benefits, and they feel like one feels really poppy and full of color, and the other has this dusty feel that really captures some of the essence I was going for and the feel of the piece. Although there's not a lot of story going on there, it does kind of have a uh, you know there's almost like a a texture germane to the piece that's conveyed by texture and color and, you know, the character concept.
So anyways, if you liked what you saw today and um, you'd like to, you know, see more of it, feel free to go to MikeHarrisDesign.net. Um, I do have a newsletter. Um, and you can sign up for for monthly updates, you know, find out what I'm doing. Uh, obviously, all the links to my social networking stuff is in there. Um, you know, and, and, you know, ultimately, if you feel like you just like to see more videos, uh, kind of walkthroughs on the process, uh, let me know. And if you have any, you know, questions or, or any requests as far as, like, what kind of stuff you'd like to see, I'm certainly always open to taking requests for different kinds of art, um, more, it you know, in-depth tutorials. I, I'm trying not to get too heavy into, like, the how to use illustrator how to use photoshop more about the techniques you can do to achieve the results i do i figure I'll, there's a lot of sites that can teach you how to do a lot of this stuff but you don't know how to use those tools on your project unless you can see it done by someone who is is already applying them in a certain way uh, but anyways thanks so much for watching and like i said like and subscribe if you want to and follow me on my social networking sites. You can find those um, on mycarisdesign.net. Thanks again. Bye.